The university's accreditation is an example or a testimony to its quality and excellence. And that is a critical aspect for every student that attends Eastern Illinois University because when they come here, we're able to show through our accreditation that we meet standards of excellence uh, as testified by or as verified by the North Central Association. Uh, we wanted to ensure that we could have the broadest participation in the survey so that students and faculty could give us feedback on how um, Eastern is meeting the criteria. Within about 48 hours of our request to create a web-based survey, uh, Danny Harvey was put in charge of the project and he came up with several different templates for the survey and allowed all of us who were on the steering committee to um, pilot it and uh, participate in it so that we could see how it was working and if it was meeting our needs in specific ways. As a result of CAT's work and the web-based survey, we had the largest participation of students and faculty in this process in our history. And we're really delighted about that because when the site reviewers are here, we'll be able to show how many students participated and be able to verify that our students were aware of their accreditation and had opportunities to participate in the process. I'm excited to talk about how CATS has helped the Counseling and Student Development Department. Uh, they've helped us specifically in three ways. First, they've helped us with a grant, and we utilize that grant to redesign the program and utilize technology throughout uh, our teaching. And I think this was instrumental in helping the department move forward in integrating technology throughout the program. Second, CATS has helped us individually by putting some of our courses on the internet. They not only did the kinds of things you would expect, moving content to the web, but they also surprisingly helped me think a lot about pedagogy and learning theory and how teaching over the internet is different. And I thought we were able specifically in my course to utilize the best of what the internet has to offer. Lastly, uh, CATS has helped us redesign our web page utilizing flash technology. And I was glad to see that they're willing to try something new and not only help me with the project, but stay with me until I'm satisfied. I think it's really important that uh, students get access to and see modeled for them the use of technology in the classroom. CATS provides the training and resources for our faculty to do just that. And in working with accreditation bodies, I know that they are very interested that our students are well trained uh, in technology and can utilize it in professional life. I take students uh, over to Belgium to work on the excavation of a castle and at the same time. Uh, they get an introduction to what archaeology is as a crossroad discipline between the sciences and the humanities. I have a lot of slides and photos uh, as well as the graphics that we create every year uh, when we excavate. We talked about how we could translate this into uh, a document we could use. I borrowed a video camera from Media Services and took it over the next summer and uh, one of the young women here who went on the project uh, trained to, uh, to use that, so we added live video footage to our collection of materials, and that too got incorporated into the product that we have so far. We saw that we could do a number of things to help recruitment for the project, and also to help people in the university community and beyond it understand what we're doing and its significance and so forth. I'm certainly learning a lot from my collaboration with CATS uh, and it's a work in progress uh, and I look forward to the next phases of this work. Well, our project is to teach an MBA class um, with students in two locations. 
Uh, we have a program at Parkland and uh, in order to be able to accommodate the Parkland students at the same time as we accommodate our campus students here, uh, we either have to have teachers in both places or use this technology and so we've been trying to pilot this technology uh, for the last uh, last semester and this semester we're uh, making it work a little better with some improvements in uh, the network and the equipment. The problem is with the number of students we have up there it doesn't justify sending a faculty member up there every semester uh, and it's really difficult for them to come down here so with the distance learning technology that CATS was starting to uh, acquire, we approached CATS as to whether they could help us possibly solve this problem that we had, uh, putting a teacher in two places at the same time. And uh, so they started to pursue that project with us, which turned into a pilot project last spring. This semester we are running it with two of our MBA classes and have students on, at both locations and it's working out quite well so far. We envision that uh, our MBA program at Parkland at some point in time uh, those students may be able to take all of their courses using this technology which would give them a much greater selection of courses and not take them as long to finish the program uh, because of the currently limited number of courses we can teach at any given time up at Parkland. So CATS has provided a level of support that we didn't have previously directly for faculty, uh, wide availability of training materials and help and uh, other assistance that they can get. And I feel like this is uh, really the first step toward uh, empowering faculty to use whatever technologies they might feel would benefit them the most in their classroom. I offered a senior seminar in 1980, the first senior seminar on the campus, a capstone course for our majors, uh, all our EIU majors, and the title said, A Spaceship Earth, the Present State. And we have to cover the current state of the planet Earth, the potential, the limitation, and the growing of all aspects of population, pollution, everything else. So I have to bring the latest data, it's no textbook. I have a lot of graphs, a lot of color pictures, a lot of data, complicated charts, and I, students cannot take notes. How are you going to help me? I said, well, there's two ways we could help you. One, to put all those on the web. And then we had problem <laughs> accessing the web. The students tried to access it from home. And said, so, well, we could put all those in a CD. And you provide the CD for the students in the class. Now I'm able to bring very effective instructional technology to classroom. I said, the grade of our students in my senior seminar have improved significantly. I have easier time. I'm not worried about it. For every area, there is someone there to help us. It's not limited. It's not narrow in the scope or narrow in services. And if sometimes something they have to get help, they get it, not I. Technology is a powerful tool for our instruction. freshman year through graduate school, we need to systematically check that key knowledge and skills that we think speech pathologists should possess at the end of their program are being acquired throughout their program. So we have a large variety of people needing to assess those skills over a large period of time. We worked on trying to develop a database ourselves. We tried avenues such as Excel, SPSS, and we couldn't come up with a way to have so many raters input and not be looking through huge databases of where am I going to put this number at, that there'd be issues of accidentally deleting data, putting data in the wrong place, just not being able to find where you should put it. After a year or two of trying, we decided to uh, contact CATS. Danny Harvey got involved and worked with us, um, spent a chunk of his time developing an access database that is also um, works well from the web. He spent time developing um, 
a way for faculty members just to be able to drop down, almost like they electronically enter grades here on campus, that you can drop down, choose a student, choose a class, or an experience like an internship, and um, then the items that are supposed to be assessed out of that class shows up. The faculty gives those ratings. They say submit, and it shows up in our database, but without faculty having to look through large spreadsheets and stuff. That's been very helpful. Um, students are also getting lots of detailed feedback from that. So again, not only do they get a B in the class, but they'll get a printout every year of going, here's how faculty members or external site supervisors saw your skills in these areas. So these are areas of strength for you. These are areas that might be weaker and should be worked on. courses that I that had taught face to face for like 10 years to convert those to online delivery. I've taught it for three years now uh, online and uh, it's been uh, really a good experience. Uh, I've gotten really good uh, support from, from CATS, uh, good support from uh, the graduate school, this is also a graduate, pro, graduate course, and uh, also from continuing education. Uh, which admit, does most of the administrative work f for the courses, so I couldn't ask for better, better support. Also from uh, from the uh, ITS when I had other other problems. The short history of CATS has it has shown that uh, it's uh, I think it's been successful in that more and more students, more and more faculty are integrating technology. More and more courses are, are going online. Online delivered courses can really expand the, the 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 reach of the university that otherwise would never would never happen. The project that I came to Cats with was basically to prepare a palm manual for a workshop that I was going to conduct for the National Education Computing Conference. Upon my arrival to CATS, I went to Mr. Pete Grant, who I, whom I had met in developing my web page, and shared with him that I was interested in uh, the POM project for the National Education Computing Conference. He then invited me to go to the title room where we met a Ryan Gibson, and they both shared with me how to utilize a document camera. And we began taking uh, snapshots or captures of the Palm step by step, how I actually wanted to present, and from there uh, we develop a really nice palm manual. Upon the completion of the manual, an Ira Yarbrough assisted in burning the CDs for my participants. The title of the workshop, which was a three and a half hour workshop, was Reading and Writing to the Handbeat of the Handheld Technology. And my participants were teachers, administrators, technology specialists, reading Title I specialists who all were interested in integrating technology in the classroom. And having the POM manual uh, and providing a step-by-step -step approach for the participants was probably one of the best things I could have done. And without CATS, that wouldn't have been possible. I teach an MBA class, it's called Quantitative Modeling, and we always have two distinct uh, areas we're trying to serve. We have a Parkland MBA program and an Eastern MBA program. We always have taught it so that the Eastern MBAs have been taught one semester than the Parklands the next semester. Through teleconferencing, we were hoping to serve both audiences at once. We came to CATS because we realized that in the School of Business we might not have the technical expertise to pull off teaching a class effectively through teleconferencing. Well, the way that the video conferencing equipment is now set up, they can actually see my image at all time and allow me to project computer presentations or use a whiteboard. The interactivity of the off-site location is nearly as great as the on-site location. I get as many questions off-site as I get on-site, and when I ask questions, I get as many answers off-site as I get on-site. So it really does allow a great degree of interactivity between the professor and the off-site location. Having vid video conferencing capabilities really expands your ability to reach a lot of people. 
I can really see this blossoming in the future and uh, it's only going to be possible through the use of cats. We are a laboratory, we're an exemplary program, and we must be able to show college students how you use technology appropriately. We want them to use technology, but we want them to use it in ways that are developmentally appropriate for children and for families. In the fall of 2000, I attended the National Association for the Education of Young Children annual conference, and they have vendor booths set up that we tour as part of the conference. They would use technology in, in a way that, that I didn't feel was, was appropriate or conducive to good relationships with families. They used webcams and they had all of these systems set up in order to you know, basically spy on child care providers. After talking to Dr. Murphy, we decided it would be very exciting to put those in our lab and use it as a parent communication tool or a family communication tool and use it for families to log on to a site and see their children in our facility. And so CATS looked at what we had hardware-wise and then also we had the security issue to be addressed because this needed to be a password protected website that was secure and wasn't available to the general public. And the software for achieving that goal is something that we needed help with. We needed someone to facilitate that. We told you what we had, we told you what our needs were and what our focus was for the families and, and you took care of that and you, and you did it within our budget which was very important, you know, in finding, finding things that were inexpensive or, or free even. If we want to isolate a particular event, for example, if we wanted to look at snack time, the initiation of snack the snack part of the day over and over and over, we could do that. It's all there. We just have to save out the part that we want. And then we can discard the rest, but the research opportunities are there to actually keep files, video files, over a period of time. As we move through this process, again, we're not technology people, and so often as things came up, cats anticipated what we might need, or anticipated even, you know, a pedagogical or or a research oriented you know, type of issue that was very exciting too. And the students benefit, the college students benefit because they're seeing technology used in a family friendly way instead of in an adversarial way. And we literally have everything that we need now. It's, it's up and running, the students use it, um, family members use it, extended family uses it. You know, we've had nothing but positive reports you know, related to this program. And of course that's exciting because we've been waiting a long time to do this. Every detail was addressed with kindness and respect. <laughs>